In this problem, we need to determine the downward deflection of point B if the rod BC is made of steel, the modular elasticity of this steel is 29,000 KSI and has a diameter of 1.5 inch. Horizontal element is a rigid. We learned that the rigid means that it doesn't deform or deflect. It can just rotate around a pen support at A. And this rigid beam is subjected to a force, 12 kips, which is located 4 feet on the right side of pen A. Okay, um, I want to see how can I determine the total downward deflection at B. In answering this kind of problems, the first step always is using the freeway diagram. Can you tell me what is the freeway diagram that I can use here? How can I free this element? How can I take out this rigid beam and make it free? How many unknown forces do I, should I consider here? Let me first take it out. So how many forces should I put here? Can you tell me? Three. This is the force that I have. This is not unknown force, okay? So this is 12 kips. When I release this from this part, how many unknown force do I have there? When I remove a pen support, I will put two unknown forces there. One in the X direction, another one in the Y direction, all right? So I, let me call them as AX and AY. So that is the components of restraint force in the X and Y direction respectively. All right, what else? There is one unknown force at B which comes from that rod. Okay, when I cut that, when I make that free, I need to put a non force there. So let me call that force as FBC. All right. So I have three unknowns here. And how many equations do I have? Can I determine these unknowns, unknown forces by equilibrium equations? How many unknown equations in general do I have here? Three. Okay. The first is sum of the forces in X direction. Second, sum of the forces in the Y direction. And the last one is some of the moments, correct. Okay, here I think that I need to determine FBC. Why? Because I want to determine how much is the stress in that element, and I want to determine how much is the strain in that element. So actually, I don't need to determine AX and AY. So it's better to use some of the moments about A, so I can get rid of these two unknowns, and I can simply determine what is uh, FBC. All right? So some of the moments about A is zero. 12 kips has arm of four feet, and unknown force FBC has arm of five feet. And they are acting opposite to each other. So equilibrium equation gives me FBC times five. I assume that the counterclockwise is positive. So that gives me FBC times five feet, minus 12 kips times four feet. So I can solve FBC, that gives me 48 over 5 kips, which is equal to 9.6 kips, which is equal to 9,600 pounds. So that is the force in this element. That is the first step. All right. Now, I want to determine how much is stress in that element. How can I do that? I simply need to divide this force by area, okay? So I need to determine area of that rod. The diameter is given, and I can simply determine area as pi over 4 times diameter squared, which is equal to 1.767 squared inch. And stress would be force over area. That gives me 9,600 pound divided by 1.767 squared inch. And that gives me a stress equivalent to 5430 PSI. All right. So I have determined stress at that point. What else? Now, I'm looking for deformation at this point. Deformation is related to a strain. So I need to determine a strain in that element. So Hooke's law says that Stress is equal to E times strain. Module of elasticity is given. It is 29,000 KSI. I'm looking for a strain, and I know how much is the stress. So a strain would be sigma divided by E. There is one important point here. What is the unit of stress here? 
KSI. What is the unit of given module of elasticity? KSI. I cannot simply divide them together. I need to first convert one to the other one. Okay. This unit conversion is very important. Okay. So a stress is 5430 PSI and the module of elasticity is 29,000 KSI and I will multiply that by 1,000 to get that, to convert that into PSI and that gives me the value of the strain which is a very small and that is equal to 0 0.000187 inch over inch. And in the very last step, the deformation would be epsilon times L again here that is in feet, and I need to convert that into inch. So strain is 187 times 10 to the minus 6, and length is 3 feet. I convert that into inch. That gives me 36 inch. And the final answer would be 0.00674 inch. Okay. I just wanted to show you one example on how we can use this stress to strain relations or Hooke's law to determine deformations from force or in the reverse way. We can determine force from given deformation. Some of you may notice that if this element rotates about uh, point A, it is actually forming a curved line because it is actually a part of a circle, okay? But here I assume that it is going downward only. The reason that I assumed it goes downward only and I ignored the, uh, the movement to the left is because the total deformation here is very, very small. This is actually a general rule. As long as deformations are small, we can assume that the movement is a long straight line perpendicular to the direction of the elements.